Hello, welcome back to another SA Games tutorial. And today I'm going to be doing a multiple part series of how to integrate ink into Godot. Um, I am doing this documentation and this tutorial uh, mostly because I've been working with both of these tools and I've been finding that um, there isn't a lot of up-to-date tutorials or documentation with how to integrate these two tools. And some of the documentation that exists I just found not as intuitive, and since I have a little bit of background doing education, I thought that I would try my hand at uh, walking people through the process of integrating these two tools together. So I have a little sample scene here that's using some assets that I got from itch.io that I'll link to below. Um, it's a very, very simple visual novel kind of mock-up um, using two characters, a dialogue box that has some placeholder text right now, uh, that will be dynamically changed uh, based on the ink story that we're going to uh, import into this project. Um, but before we get started with really starting to code that out and get things integrated, I thought that something that would be helpful to get us started is even just to understand how to get uh, some of the tools that we'll need, some of the plugins that we'll need loaded into our project. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is that we're going to be integrating what's called Ink GD, which is a library uh, uh, to allow for a library and a plugin, I should say, that allows for us to use Ink uh, file types within Go uh, Godot and also to do a lot of interpretive stuff that makes programming uh, GD scripts for Ink stories really, really easy. Um, or much easier uh, than doing it from scratch. So the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna go over to the asset library and I'm gonna search for ink GD and it's gonna be the only thing that pops up. And I'm gonna go ahead and download this, import this into my project, click install. Should get uh, installations installed successfully. And then the second thing that I want to do is that I want to go over to project and go to my project settings and make sure that this plugin is activated in my, you know, in my project. So you'll see that InkGD has been loaded. I want to enable this. I have go ahead and enabled this and I'll click close. And those are two very important steps to get started with using ink. You'll see that an add on folder has been added to your resource folder that I can kind of open up here. And you can see that there's a number of different things that have been added on here, which is really helpful and really great. Um, the other thing that it's going to help us uh, with is adding some uh, templates and adding some other things that we can work off of, which we'll get into in just one second. The next thing that we're going to do is that uh, just to get things started and to get things running, I'm also going to add what's called a singleton to our project to basically auto load our ink runtime script to be able to do a lot of the background interpretation that we need to have. So I'll go to my project settings and I'll go to the auto load. And you'll already notice that this auto load is loaded in here. I'm actually not sure if this has been loaded in uh, as a new feature within the newer version of ink.gd. Uh, I had to do this manually when I first was using this tool. So in case it isn't loaded here, you can always go and click on the folder where the path is. You can go to the, let me go to the first path here. You can go to your add-ons folder, ink GD, runtime, static, and you'll see that there is an ink runtime.gd, and you can click open. Again, it's already loaded for me, so I'm gonna click cancel. It will load that path up here, and then you want to name this node underscore, underscore, ink, run, time. Okay. And ink and runtime are bumpy caps. Uh, so that should work. And again, this does a lot of the kind of glue and the background work to allow for this plugin to kind of function in an optimal way uh, and function kind of not even in an optimal way, but in a functional way uh, so that we can start working with these tool tools. An important note to kind of say here that I maybe should have said at the top of this first introduction is that I'm going to be working off of a general assumption that people coming to this tutorial have a little bit of familiarity with using Godot already. So I'm not going to go too, too heavily into how, you know, nodes work or how to add nodes to uh, your library. 
excuse me, add notes to your hierarchy um, to talk about how the hierarchy works uh, or kind of basic fundamental principles of using GDScript, which is the scripting language that we're going to be using to integrate ink into our projects. Um, but I'm going to try to be as judicious and as slow as possible to go through these processes for anyone that might not have a ton of familiarity or a ton of background using Godot to make sure that, you know, that if this is your first time trying out these, uh, the software or these tools, uh, that you won't get too, too terribly lost. So I'm going to end it here for this kind of first chapter, and we're going to get into uh, really looking at some of the story templates that we can use and how we can start to integrate some of that stuff into our project in the very next lesson.